Okay, so welcome back again. In the last movie, we talked about how to set up the 960 and how to use the 960 grid system. And I just want to give you a couple extra add-ons and things to think about here in this movie that have helped me, because um, I use this a lot in design. It keeps you from having to reinvent the wheel over and over. It won't per work perfectly in every situation, but it will cover a lot of them. And uh, it's very beneficial to you as a designer. Um, if you're going to add your own styles into here, this is kind of how I do it without stepping on the toes of 960. What I'll do is let's go ahead and let's create a new file. And I'll call this styles.css. And let's go ahead and I put that in the CSS folder for our website here that we're working in. Let me close that. We need to link that style sheet up. So I'll drop another line and let's say link href equals, and in quotes, it's in the CSS folder, slash styles.css. And the rel is going to be equal to style sheet. And Okay, so typically here's what we have. If I'm going to be dealing with typography here, I will either modify this file or I will take it out completely. That's the text.css. That's the optional file. Um, I'm not going to do that in this instance, so I'll leave that there. We're going to add a fourth style sheet, and this is going to be my style. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And let's say we wanted to do something like this. Let's create... Um, you can see up at the top where, okay, 960 demo, it didn't allow for that container 12 or the grid 12 to give us any buffer between that and the top of the screen. And I know that's not exactly a company logo or anything, but I probably want to visually bring that down rather than have it centered up there. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is create a style for that. And we'll call, we'll give it, um, you can do one of two things. You can, we can give it an ID of header, but let's do it with a class. Let's call it class equals um, header. And in that, I'm going to say, we're going to say padding, colon, and I'll say 50 pixels, 0, 0, 0. And that will say, basically, you're going to add 50 pixels of padding onto the top. Now, when I come back over to my index.html file, I need to find that little chunk of code here, and it's right here. This is the div class equals grid 12, uh, 960 demo. Um, I've seen people try to do this before where they'll create another div inside that, and it gets pretty crazy with all the divs. Um, remember that CSS does support multiple class assignments with tags. So, for instance, I can assign it a grid 12, and if I want to put another class associated with that, I would go space, and I would say header. And this basically links it to two styles, the grid 12, which was in this 960 file, and then the header class, which is over here in my styles.css. So now, when I go refresh that page, you're going to see that it gave me 50 pixels of padding up in the top and drop that down. So remember, you can double up styles, and I think that's the easiest way to do this without stepping on toes with the grid um, or creating more divs than you need to. Because remember, coding and everything else, this is all, it needs to be as minimal as possible. Um, the cleanest code is always the best. Um, you'll notice that I'm a real stickler, like in my own code, that I use the right tab delineations. I keep everything clean. I keep it easy to read. And even though you can tell there's a lot of text in here, you can kind of still see because of the way it tabs out where the layers are or where the div tags are and what the classes are and all that. So you want clean code. And you don't want to write more code than you need to. So I would, my way is to double that up. You could also give this an ID of header and you could have made that an ID instead of a class. But remember that classes you can double up. I could even add more. You could triple and quadruple and you keep adding styles to that. So uh, don't make it too confusing, but know that that is at your disposal. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is that I, you know, this looks really clean and beautiful when you're dealing with text, but a lot of times um, you've got images in here too. You've got links. You've got all kinds of weird things. Sometimes you start to have images. Let's say you change your typeface to something that's a serif typeface. The problem that I've had with 960, and the one place it kind of falls short, are the gutters, which remember, the gutter is known as the negative space between each column here. The gutter is a little too tight for my taste, and the gutter, I believe, is set at 20 pixels for the default, and I like that to be a little wider. Now, what do you do? Do you have to go in and rewrite all the code yourself? Well, no, you don't. Let's go back over to the 960 uh, grid system website, and there's a ton of cool stuff on here, but this is a big one that I want to show you. It's this custom CSS generator button, and if I click on that, it basically allows me to customize all of the CSS and download a new file. Okay, this is very powerful, boys and girls. Um, basically, it's given me the default, which is what's written into the code when you download it, which is what we have in there now. And the content width is actually 940 pixels because, remember, we do have a little bit of negative space on either side. And then the full width is 960. It also gives me the column width. So for each of those 12 columns, it's 60 pixels wide. There are indeed 12 columns. I could change If I want to do something weird like a 14 column or a 13 column, knock yourself out. I don't see why you would, but you can. And then also the gutter width is right here, which is 20. And that's what I was going 
complaining was too small. So let's go ahead. I'm going to double that. We're going to add 20 pixels to it. Um, but note that when you add 20 pixels to this, it's going to change. It's going to knock everything out. It's going to make everything wider. So let's go ahead and I'm going to say 40. And notice that it made the full width 1,200 pixels. Um, I would not use this in a web design because you can see it's already putting scroll bars in this browser. That's a pretty bold move uh, to consider that people have a screen big enough to, to do that. So I want to bring this back down to 960. So typically what I do is if I've added 20 pixels to the gutter, I'll take 20 pixels away to the column width. So let's make that instead of 60, let's take that down to 40. And there we go. We're back at 960 again for our full width, which is comfortable. Um, you can change this number. It doesn't matter. But um, we've got 960 and we've got our content width is actually 920. It dropped a little bit. But this, this does work. So if I want to use that 40 pixel gutter, I need to plug those numbers in. Then I simply come over here and you download CSS file. And really what it does is it opens a text file in a new window. I need to select all. It's Command A on the Mac or Control A on the PC. And then I copy it. Command A on Mac, Control C on PC. And I'm going to go over here to the code. And I'm going to open the 960.css file. Let's select that. I'm going to delete everything in there. And let's paste that code in from the website and save it. Now when I come back over here, I want you to watch the gutters in here. I'm going to refresh and you'll see that they all are now 20 pixels wider. This is a big help. So know that you can go modify the 960 um, grid. And that's a very, very handy thing to have. There's some other tools in here that are really nice too. Um, there's a layout generator, which I just rarely use because I don't need it. There's also a grid overlay bookmark, which just allows you as a web developer to go overlay grids onto web pages, which is really pretty cool. Kind of similar to what we were doing here when we hit show grid. The 960 system is awesome. Um, I use it all the time. It's a great place to start. You can modify it. Um, even if you keep it stock, it comes with so many templates for various graphic design applications. If you need to make your graphics, make sure they line up. If you have an image that needs to span four columns, you need to know what that width is. Well, there's a template for that. Um, if you don't know what that template is, you can also go in here to the dimensions to view the demo, and you can see what all your, your widths are right there. So anyway, very helpful stuff. I hope you enjoy the grid system. Like I said, I use it all the time. I can't use it all the time. Time. Now and then there are, I just totally um, contradicted myself. So life is complicated, boys and girls. I use it all the time when I can. There are situations where it won't work. Um, and just because it's not everything to all people. But uh, yeah, I would say about 90% of the time, this has come in very handy. And it keeps you from having to write CSS for the layout. Um, it doesn't mean that you won't have to go write any CSS at all. In fact, it's quite the contrary. But you at least don't have to set up your layout this way. Anyway, that has been the 960 system. Uh, and I hope you got something out of that. And I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks again for watching.